So I hope you guys have enjoyed segment numero uno on the NX Cam. Some pretty awesome stuff. Extremely long record times. Extremely inexpensive media. A very small sized camcorder that's got time code, input and output functionality for matching up with multiple cameras. And uh, some other cool camera features. But now it's time to sort of depart from our prosumer model. We have a very special guest in the studio today. Uh, this is the Ferrari of high definition multi-camera operations. It's the HXC100, OK? Um, true, there are some other cameras out there that, that are going to surpass it even in quality, the HDC 1500R, for instance. But a lot of what you find feature-wise in the HDC 1500R is found in this camera at about 75% of the cost. Am I, am I pretty lower? Lower, 50% of the cost. A little bit higher. OK, we're going to go with 60% of the cost, all right? So for the price of, let's say, two HDC 1500s, you can get three HXC 100s. Pretty awesome. Who, who are the kinds of people that want this Ferrari of multi-camera uh, multi high definition cameras? Well, have you ever shot a concert uh, multi-camera with PMW EX3s? I definitely have. Debbie, you have? All right. Have you ever shot a boxing match on DXE D50s? Studio audience? Internet guys? A lot of hands going up on the internet? All right. Um, maybe you've gotten yourself a couple of these Nipros units from Sony and put them on the bottom of an EX3 to do multi-camera solutions, right? Have you ever put a Nipro system on your shoulder? Hurts really bad. Don't even try it. In fact, don't even think about it. If you even think about doing a Nipro system on your shoulder, you should immediately grab the phone and call me up at Midtown Video to rent a couple of HXC 100s. Why? Let's get into it. Number one, 2 thirds inch CCD, right? The broadcast standard of color capture devices. No? Correct me, Tony. I'm good? I was right? OK, all right, all right. Authorized. Sony corporate authorized. Three. 2 thirds inch CCDs. Uh, the A to D device, so these are not XMOR chips, which means the color capture, the co charged coupling device is separated from the A to D analog to digital converter. That's fine. You, you can have a little bit of higher power consumption on a shoulder mounted camera. Um, but the A to D converters are 14 bits. 14 bits. So that's 16 times the resolution of your standard 10 bit analog to digital conversion for, for my math friends out there. Um, Shoulder mount, that's a, that's a huge one. You can actually expect somebody to stand ringside you know, and get those low angles while the ref is counting out the, the MMM, MMA fighter that's you know, knocked out on the ring without having to sort of you know, stick your arms up like this. You can really get a nice, comfortable shot. The 2 thirds inch lenses allow you to put on your sport lenses, your wide angle lenses. Your jib guy's not going to complain, oh, that EX3 is front heavy. You, you know, this is a totally legitimate camera. Um, even though it's lower cost than, than some of its bigger brothers, it, it really puts you into a high quality, high definition multi-camera system. And what is the number one feature that everybody cheers about for the HXC100? Digital triax. All right. Let's say you've got a church and you've got some triax cameras and some CCUs back in the control room. You want to upgrade to high definition, but you're concerned about ripping up your walls, taking out your existing wiring, and replacing them with something else. This camera will free you free you from that responsibility. Why? The existing digital triax runs, even some of the existing analog triax runs, if I'm not mistaken, yes, sir. that's correct, awesome, are, are perfectly qualified to operate between your HXC100 camera and your CCU. Model number on the CCU? HXC100? That's the camera. HXCU100. All right, cool. We love model numbers here. Um, definitely ask for them by name. Or once again, you can say, just give me the CCU for the HXC100. And again, I promise you, we'll know what you mean. Um, I I'm going to spend just another second repeating this, because it is, so, it is such a big deal to be able to use existing triax runs. Let's say you're going into a stadium to shoot, I don't know, the Miami Heat. You know that there's triax run all over that American Airlines arena, but those cameras were put in when people were still shooting on standard definition cameras. What if you want to rent? couple of HXC 100s for the night. Well, you can be totally confident that your existing triax runs are going to carry the same signals. Your HDSDI out of the CCU, your HDSDI return from the CCU back to the camera, your composite return from the CCU to the camera. You know, power is brought right in through the triax cable. Intercom, of course, uh, you've got some prompter signals, Genlock timecode, 
everything's going to work on your existing Triax runs, which, which is totally awesome. All right. Uh, now to, to sort of get into just two further deeper features on this HXC100, I'm going to ask for the help of some PowerPoint slides. So Verge, can you, can you give me something on, a, on the multi-matrix, please? All right. <laughs> Internet viewers at home, uh, you're welcome. The multi-matrix inside the HXC100 is extremely sophisticated. You're taking your standard color wheel, breaking it up into, whoa, <laughs> breaking it up into 16 sections. Actually, I like that, Verge. Bring up that, that crazy feedback. <laughs> there you go. All right. No, nah, it's not. OK, that's even better. That's even better. OK, so here you are. Co standard color wheel, 16 sections. So eight on the top, eight on the bottom, or however you want to call it. So what is this multi-matrix going to do? Well, let's say you're shooting a John Deere commercial, and you've got to get that special John Deere green. Let's say you're shooting a Coca-Cola commercial, and you've got to get that Coca-Cola red. But you don't want to skew the entire image, right? So you want to leave your blues the same. You want to leave your greens the same. But you want to zoom in right on that Coca-Cola red. Because we've cut this color wheel up into so many different segments, uh, and you've got this sophisticated control in the multi-matrix, you can actually pick out your, just your reds. Right? And if it's, it's, if it's sufficiently far away from one of the edges on those sections, you can really change the way your reds look. Um, give me that slide again one more time, please. I want to direct your attention to these colored pencils to the right of our color wheel section. All right? uh, notice the, the colored pencil indicated by the blue arrows. You're, you've got red on the top and purple on the bottom. But if you look at the, colors, the colored pencils to the you know, sort of bordering those two indicated ones, totally unaffected. Your blues are the same. Your yellows are the same. Your whites are the same, and your greens are the same. However, you've taken that one almost red and converted it to your Coca-Cola red, right, without skewing the rest of the image. This multi-matrix control allows you extremely sophisticated color correction, even down to 1 16th of the color wheel. Is that, that's pretty clear, right? If that's not clear, come on in and talk to your buddies that know what's going on, and we'll, we'll be happy to, to explain it a little bit.